Hi there, my name is Paul Ricketts. I'm with the South Physics Observatory in the Department of Physics and Astronomy at the University of Utah. Uh, we've been doing some telescope videos the last little bit, and now it's time to get a little bit more in depth. Um, we're going to talk about uh, the sky this time. We're going to talk about how the astrophotography is really about the sky. Um, it take you can take really cool pictures and stuff like that but it's also really cool to learn about what you're taking pictures of so we're going to uh, show you some stuff like that but also it's going to be in a way that if you're just beginning to get into this uh, hopefully we'll be able to um, give some things for you to understand what's going on how to use things how to set them up what this means what that means and uh, all that kind of stuff so it's going to be a series of um, I don't know 20 videos or something we'll see I haven't made them yet so we'll find out um, but uh, we're gonna start off talking about sky mechanics so that's basically how the sky works uh, how it moves around how we view it how thing different things affect the sky how astrophotography is affected by the sky um, that comes down to like how the atmosphere affects the sky how light pollution affects the sky um, all that kind of stuff and things like what is right ascension, declination, altitude azimuth. That way when you come across it when you're doing astrophotography, you actually have an idea of what it is um, and maybe it'll help you a little bit farther along. So um, I think we should just get started. So uh, let's go. First what we have to talk about um, is kind of a really uh, kind of an old way of thinking about sky, the sky but it's still valid. Um, so we're going to talk about what's called the celestial sphere, and the idea of this is just to give you kind of like a a um, kind of a centralized view of the the sky and kind of help you kind of envision what the sky is supposed to look like. Um, it's not supposed to be able to like take place of the actual universe. It's not an actual dome or anything above the Earth. Um, it's just a way of understanding it that for some people is a little bit easier. Um, so in the past you may have seen something that looks similar to uh, this little thing. It's called a um, celestial sphere. You can see the Earth in here. Um, this is supposed to be the, the sun right here. You got this big uh, sphere out here. That's the uh, stars and stuff, how they're projected into the sky as we would see them. Um, this whole thing moves around usually and you can kind of get an idea of how stuff rotates around the Earth. So. You know, this is kind of like a basic way of understanding um, what the the sky looks like. Um, we don't see the entire thing. We're not going to see the whole 360 degree sphere um, because we're on a 360 degree sphere, and so we're looking out above the, or out from that, and so we're only going to be able to see just a portion of it. And so, um, when we look at other things, like there's another way we can look at it and um, give you an idea of what's going on with it. So another way of looking at it is if you just kind of draw a dome over your head. So this right here, this is, let's say this is you, or in this case a shepherd for some reason. Um, so you're seeing this portion of the sky which kind of just looks like this portion of the sky, but it changes. So if this person is up here on the very north pole of the earth, they're going to see everything above this line up to uh, Polaris. And depending on where they are down here, as you far, go farther and farther down, um, they'll, that kind of dome that you were able to see kind of shifts. And so you'll start to be able to see farther down here and less back here. Um, and then the uh, North Pole or the Polaris actually looks like it starts to come back down like this until you start going past the equator of the Earth, which would be kind of the same portion as right there, once you start going past that, the North actually starts to disappear because it dips down behind the Earth, and you start to see more and more stuff down here. And so that gives you an idea of what you're able to kind of look at up in the, in the night sky. So another way of looking at this is if you come into this. So this gives you kind of a, an idea of how things work also, um, a little bit less hands-on looking um, but to give you an idea the there's this ecliptic that goes through the sky the celestial equator um, and then uh, there's other things that'll come into play in just a little bit but 
the ecliptic is basically the path that that is the path that everything kind of follows in the sky like the Sun and the planets um, they all go along that and the reason why it's tilted is because the earth is actually tilted so that if you kind of just twist this just a little bit then you actually kind of get that looking normal and the celestial equator is just the projection of the equator of the earth out onto the celestial sphere so that would be like seeing this you'll see the equator right here and then the celestial equator comes around right in there and then since this is tilted you'll actually see the sun go up or higher then lower then higher then lower um, through that sky and you can see how it's mounted right here and it's about 23 and a half degrees uh, off of the earth's rotation axis just because it's actually been the earth is tilted um, so what we want to do is kind of understand that a little bit better um, we can talk about different things in different ways uh, so we're gonna move on to kind of how the earth rotates and moves and stuff and then that'll give us a better Im uh, imagination so it kind of help build on everything okay so now that we kind of have an idea of what the celestial sphere is you know that's not exactly what the earth and the sky and everything is like I said it's just a way to project it out there to understand it um, so when we look at the real night sky we're gonna see some interesting things come up so when we look at the north we're gonna see something that looks similar to this so this star right here is Polaris you'll notice that Polaris isn't here in the very center when we zoom in the actual center is just a little bit off to the side right here but that's because the north polar axis doesn't follow exactly with Polaris it's off just a hair but you notice the farther out you go you see longer and longer streaks and so when you look out here these stars appear like they're moving faster but they're just having to cover a longer distance but it's moving at the same actual rate it's not like the earth rotates differently no matter like in where you are it's just the angular speed that you're seeing things move through the sky is increasing as you get towards the celestial equator and so if we switch this out for the next view uh, so north is going to be up here and you're going to see south down here and you'll notice that the arcs come this way as you go to north and then they start bending down that way and then if you look right here in the center you can actually see that these stars kind of go directly like that but this gives you an idea that you may not have had before and that's uh, stars and things move through the sky in big arcs not in straight lines unless you're right at the equator um, but it's still a big arc through the sky but it, relative to the others you know it's a slightly different looking arc and so we can see this one here too it shows it a little bit differently so you can see the how the arcs kind of uh, twist to the north and they kind of twist to the south and so you can actually find where the celestial equator is by kind of looking where these are the most straight how you don't see an arc down or an arc up so another way to view this is by looking at a planetarium program uh, like this one so we can actually turn on uh, our grids and stuff we'll leave them off for now but if you turn off the atmosphere you can see all the stars and if you speed this up you can start seeing how the motions of things take place across the sky and this is actually exactly how things move across the sky and so when we look up you'll notice that something right here gets higher in the sky and then as soon as it gets past south it starts to get lower and if you look up here they kind of look like they start moving in the other direction until you get to north and then you're gonna see right here where things are moving uh, basically around Polaris so Polaris is gonna be that one right there so this kind of gives you just a general idea of how things move through the sky and you notice that they go they rise in the east and set in the west that's kind of what we all know um, we can follow the sun across the sky and eventually it's going to get to the west um, it may not hit the west directly you actually might see it hit a little bit northwest and that's due to the tilt of the earth and it'll actually set a little bit more northwest in the summer and southwest in the winter so I'm sure you can figure out at what time of year 
it's going to set directly west and that's going to be during the equinoxes and so you can see it's setting so it's not directly west there So a question you can you can bring up is since the sun and the stars all set in the west, what direction does that make the earth have to turn in order for that to happen? And that means the earth is turning towards the east. So we're rotating towards the east and that's why everything comes back like this. You can kind of get an idea just by standing up and spinning around and you see things moving past you as you're kind of going the opposite direction. Um, you know that's kind of a basic thing for uh, people to learn in school and stuff but you know sometimes we don't think about it after a while so a couple of little things there uh, to give you an idea of how that moves so we can do a another thing and that's turn on some paths here so if we go into the program uh, we can pick some paths for things to follow through the sky and so what we want to look at okay we want to pick something out called the ecliptic close that out and you'll notice that here's the moon we'll go back in time and you'll start to notice something so that's the path of the Sun Mercury Moon's still following it here's Venus and you'll notice that all of the planets and the moon and the sun all fall along that line and that line is actually the projection of this the plane of our solar system out in the space so even though we're tilted at 23 and a half degrees so this thing doesn't actually follow along uh, our equ our equatorial grid so this is zero right here so this is where the celestial equator is it's also where our equator is, but you notice that the sun and the planets don't exactly follow that, and that's about 23 and a half degrees um, from that to there. And you can see that third 20 degrees right there, 25, and there's 30, or and there's 23 ish. So, so it gives you an idea that that kind of that's kind of how our sky is set up. That gives you another example of how the earth is set up relative to the rest of the stars in the sky and actually the planets so all of these other things in here they kind of just move along with the earth's rotation you won't see them go up or down but so you'll notice something here not always is this in, like directly south so you notice that the peak of it is over here in the southwest and if we watch it over time you'll kind of see it move up and down and it moves up and down relative to the earth's position and its tilt and so you'll notice that now it's like peak is right there now you'll start seeing that it's actually looking like it's getting higher and higher in the sky as the Sun comes up and so now we're seeing it all the way up here and as soon as Sun rises you'll notice that it's as kind of the maximum position for today but what you would notice is through winter that doesn't actually get that high anymore so if we change it to a different time of year if we change it to December you notice that the sun rises much farther south and then if we track that through the day you'll start to see that instead of setting all the way up here in the northwest it'll set down here so the arc that it makes across the sky is a lot lower and that's purely due to the earth's tilt on its axis. So something interesting to think about is 
yes, you will see, let's go back to now, you will see the ecliptic go across the sky right there. But what you'll notice is that if you're trying to find planets and stuff through the sky, you can't just go from east to west because these are in different positions. So sometimes you'll see like the moon is much farther north. It appears like it's much farther north than something else down here that is bound to rise shortly. Let's speed it up a little bit. So you'll see where the moon is. And we'll get to another planet. So then you'll see that if you're looking out this way, in this particular time of year, and this time of night, which is around 1.04 a.m., the arc is kind of maximized right there. But if you were to try to gauge the position of other things as they go through the sky, now it'll kind of throw you off because if you're kind of drawing kind of trying to figure out where things are by drawing a line through stuff so let's say the moon set off up here and then you were trying to dry, draw a line from there to Saturn to Jupiter across straight across the sky you would notice that Mars doesn't follow along that it's actually a lot higher in the sky but that's just due to this position here so you actually have to recognize um, the uh, basically the astrological signs and where they are in the sky and that'll actually give you the path of the planets through the sky so you can't just be like okay east to west and then there's going to be all of them through here so it doesn't really work as well as uh, you would think so another thing that you can kind of figure out by looking at the sky is where the Milky Way lies and so let's go back in time let's actually go to now forward a little bit so this is going to be kind of a cool imagination so we'll park it right there so this right here that is the plane of our solar system and you notice that it is not really in the same line as the Earth, so there's Polaris, so we're 23 and a half degrees from pol from that. But you'll notice that the Milky Way goes up this way, and we can put a marker in for that. So that's the galactic equator. And you'll notice that, well, our whole solar system isn't really in line with the galaxy. So if we weren't wanted to look directly out of the galaxy, let's say like perpendicular to the galaxy's plane, we don't look straight up. We actually have to look that direction. So over here is actually perpendicular to uh, the galaxy's plane in this area here. So it's kind of weird to think about that we are not kind of aligned with the rest of the, so the galaxy. We're kind of different, and uh, that there's a whole you know reason why that is that we're not going to get into here, but it gives you an idea of kind of where we sit in our solar system and how we are aligned with things um, up there. Not meaning that there's any other thing that comes into our lives with that alignment, but it's kind of just cool to think about um, where we sit in the galaxy.